So you, you order your CGH. Um, we work out the alignment, and we'll, I'll talk about these options here in a bit. Your CGH shows up. What do you do? Well, the first thing is you install it into your interferometer. And so the CGH here, this is a, a three-inch CGH that's mounted into a six-inch cell. It clicks into place into our fine positioning stage. And that's all there is to mounting it. Um, you can set this up really to plastic ruler accuracy initially, and I'll, I'll show you how to do the alignment. We're just now rolling out a new product, which is a smaller version of this. So for a three inch part, we actually put it into a smaller frame and we have a smaller stage that this works with. And this is um, achieves the same performance and it's lower cost for the smaller parts. So then the next step is to align the CGH to the interferometer. And like I said earlier, the CGH has all kinds of different patterns on it, one of which reflects light back into the interferometer and it's used for aligning the rigid body position of the CGH with respect to the spherical light that's coming from the interferometer. And I think I must've skipped a page. So to do the initial course alignment, you just use the, course alignment feature in your interferometer and the positioning stage allows you to adjust tip and tilt. Um, you set the axial position to, and you get the light returning so that it's course aligned um, in this align mode. Then you go to view mode and you see fringes and anybody who's done interferometry knows this game, you tilt it to fluff out the fringes. Typically the requirement for these tests is not very tight for the tilt of the hologram. Um, uh, typically two fringes across is, is plenty good, although it's easier to get better than that. So the challenge then is really to align the A-sphere to the test itself. So the, the CGH is aligned to the interferometer. It's creating the right wavefront. You need to put your surface in the right place with respect to that wavefront. And this has to be done using the datum features on your part that you want to use later to define where that surface is with respect to some other thing that you're mounting. Um, so different degrees of freedom, the axial position is usually just measured directly. And um, I'll, I'll show you some options we have for helping with that. For lateral position, positioning and clocking, these are much more difficult. And we provide a number of different options. And I'm gonna go through these in detail, but just summarizing them or labeling them here first. So one is using mechanical features that are on the CGH itself. And those are coupled with a CMM. That's like you would mount anything or you would do any precision alignment if it's for a high performance engine or something. It's just putting parts in the right mechanical place. We also provide some really cool things that allow you to pick up the optical coordinates of the optical test system using holograms that are written onto the CGH and send projections out to somewhere near the part. And there are a number of different versions of this. And again, I'll show you some examples and I wanna just label them here. So one uses reflection from datum features on the part itself. Another one uses um, optical references that are projected to the part that you can see. and the, the most common one uses optomechanical references. These are mechanical things that can touch your datum surfaces and they have optical features that enable us to measure and control the position with respect to the CGH or with respect to the, the light from the test. So probably the simplest to understand is if we just can, we, we just put features onto the hologram itself that define its position. And so one of these uses these tooling balls here and we bond the tooling ball to the CGH and we do this accurately so that when you do your alignment, you can do this on a CMM um, and you would just go touch these balls and they define in six degrees of freedom where the hologram is. Then you go touch your datum features and you put your part in the right place. Um, there's a, a small version of this that works on a, a benchtop CMM. We also can put SMRs that are used for laser trackers. And I'll talk a little bit more about those later. We can put a, this different type of reference onto the CGH, and then you can use that to um, 
to measure the position with a laser tracker and then control the position of your of the part that's measured that's being measured using that same laser tracker. So this shows sort of a, a blow up of this. We have a um, a design here and a method that lets us start with precision tooling balls. We put them on so they're actually touching the glass and there's an invar collar here. That collar gets bonded to the glass to hold its position. And so these things touch the glass and they're very stable. We have a similar thing here with the SMRs, but this, the spherical surface isn't bonded in, it sits into a precision collar and so that it can be tilted um, and can actually be removed. And the thing that enables us to do this is our super duper optical CMM, which is this, it's a view benchmark 300. And we've tricked out the optics in this so that we can measure tooling balls. We can measure the reflection directly from the ball and then use the machine in a mode where we do what's really a self calibration. And we get about one micron accuracy and the ability to measure where any spherical feature is and we have a manipulator we build onto this machine that lets us adjust them and so we can put the balls any place on the cgh with an accuracy of about one micron so another way to do alignment is to have reference features made into the part and so this is a diamond turned a sphere and i'll show you when i turn the movie on here the center region these are the fringes off of the aspheric surface this, the ring right around that is the reflection from the CGH showing that it's aligned to about a fringe. Side of that is this funny annular cat's eye that reflects off of a datum feature that's written onto the surface itself. And so to do the alignment, it's really easy. Normally it's, it's very challenging to do this, but what, what we do is we look at the reflection from this datum feature, okay, and adjust the centration of the part to be able to fix that, to fluff out those fringes, and then adjust the tilt of the part to adjust out the tilt fringes. And you can see it takes it takes seconds to align something like this. Now this requires that there's this special datum feature, feature on the part, but um, it's an example of a nice way to do these things. There's another thing that's done fairly commonly, which is to project bright spots to a region near the part. And so the CGH itself sends light that's focused into a spot, maybe into a crosshair, and you can put a target there and you can find that bright spot using that target. You can do it by eye. Um, this is a, a cross that was projected here to a part and then position the part that you're measuring with respect to these marks. And this works pretty well for course alignment. It's very difficult to get things accurately aligned this way. And it's also very difficult to prove that you have that level of accuracy. So we usually build these things into the tests, not for the final alignment accuracy, but just as a guide to help set the test up. If the part itself is near the CGH, then it's easy to have a, a set of auxiliary optics that reflect back. We can put tooling balls that touch the part or touch something that's relative, relevant to the mount and then have on our CGH little holographic patches that bring light to focus at the center of curvature of the tooling ball so that light gets reflected back on itself. And so if this tooling ball is shifted, it would show up as tilt fringes here. If it's shifted axially, it would show up as focus fringes here. And so this enables us to, once the hologram is aligned with respect to the interferometer, we can put these tooling balls in the right place with respect to the hologram. And then you can use those as mechanical references to put your part in the right place. And this works very well over short distances of inches to maybe a foot or so. Um, it, it becomes more and more difficult as the balls have to get further away or if the balls need to be small or if the patterns need to be small because diffraction washes out this whole washes this whole thing out but not to fear we have a solution for that so this is the new thing i want to talk about today which is instead of using patches that bring light to focus onto a tooling ball what we do is we create this thing we call a line focus reference which brings light to a line focus 
onto an SMR. And then we can find the position of the SMR by looking at the reflected light. And then once we know the position of the SMR, we can put it in the right place and you can use that as a metrology reference. Let me walk you through this a little bit. So um, the, the cylinder wave front that we create from the hologram creates this line focus. And this is a, a standard thing to do. And we can put this any place in space. And so on our hologram, we have a bunch of small patches that put line focus, bring lines to focus in different spaces. Then the trick here is we take a corner cube and we put that at this line focus. Okay, if we if we had it, if it wasn't a line focus, if it was a point focus, and we put a corner cube there, if we aligned it perfectly, all the light would hit right in the center of the corner cube and it would be scattered. But when we use a line focus, then if you look at this image here on the right, um, imagine that the line is coming out of the page. Okay, so when the corner cube itself is shifted, with respect to where that light comes to focus, then the reflected light from the corner cube is shifted um, by, by that same amount from the center. And this is just the common thing for a corner cube. And this is fantastic because we can use this for alignment. By using a line focus, then if we shift the corner cube so that it's right perfectly aligned with this point, then the light would go back on itself but there's only one little region that ends up in right in the apex that gets scattered. The rest of it works just fine. And so we use this capability here, or this functionality, to be able to measure, to see light reflected um, that's misaligned by, misaligned from the light that's going out um, by the corner cube being displaced. Then the next step is to use a sphere mounted retro reflector, which if you're not familiar with it, is it's used for laser trackers. It's a corner cube that's mounted at the center of a ball. And so you can use the optical feature of the corner cube to find the focus, and then you can use the outer surface of the ball to touch something that's mechanical. And so what do you see? Well, in your interferometer, you'll see tilt fringes as this ball is misaligned. And as you bring it closer and closer to alignment, then those fringes get fluffed out. We've added this, what I call a V um, um, tilt in here so that when it's perfectly aligned, you don't have a null fringe, you end up with one fringe in the vertical direction. Let me, let me show you this. So how's this work? So if you can see this picture, it's a little dark. Um, we have a part that's being aligned with, with one of these references. And we just move it until the line that you see, the bright line, is to eyeball centered on the corner cube, okay, which is maybe to a millimeter or half a millimeter or so. Once that's close, then we go to the align mode in our interferometer and we'll see a return. And so you can see this return down here on the bottom left. I'm aligning it in this movie. Um, so I'm just turning my knobs to position the part, tran transition from align mode to interferometer mode, and voila, there's fringes. Okay, and so this shows the, the, fri the real-time fringes from this. As I align it, I fluff out the fringes, and then once I get close, um, I think it's bad. Um, so here's a, here's a blow up showing this again. So here it is fairly misaligned. You see a lot of tilt fringes. Um, shifting the, the part that has the SMR on it held with respect to the part's datum and fluffing out these fringes. And so this behaves just, just how you think it would until you get near null. And there you see this one fringe that I put in in this, in this V shape. And so here we're aligned to about two fringes. As I get it aligned better, there it's good to about one fringe. And from here, it's not really counting fringes. You just align it to fix the rotation of the fringes. And I can do this repeatedly to better than a tenth of a fringe. Um, and 
a tenth of a fringe for, for this turns out to be a, a tiny error. And so if we look at one of these, so for a 10 millimeter CGH patch, which is typical, we can look as a function of the distance of the CGH to the SMR, what that tenth of a fringe means. And so if we're less than about three meters, which is pretty close, which is actually pretty far, our resolution here corresponds to only 10 microns, okay? And we get it visually, it's really easy. If you need to go further, then if you want 10 microns of accuracy, you need to use a bigger CGH patch. And so we have one inch CGH patches that are used for longer distances that go up to 10 meters or so. We can also use this to measure axial displacement by just using the, the parallax effect. So if we have two of these focusing onto a onto a, a common SMR, as we shift that SMR axially, then those will both see different amounts of lateral shift. Now, this is nowhere near as sensitive. Um, going through the numbers here for separation of our two patches of about five inches, again, with the 10 millimeter CGH patch, working this to a 10th of a fringe, then we can see over distances of, on the order of a meter or so, then our accuracy is, for the axial resolution, is about 50 microns. And so for some applications, this is good enough and this is really easy to do. So the other thing you can do with these line focus references are just couple it with a laser tracker. Laser trackers are fantastic. The only problem is that they're kind of expensive. Um, and so you can use the line focus reference in the CGH to put the SMR in the right place with respect to the optical test. Then you use the laser tracker to make a transfer of where those SMRs are to SMRs that are um, touching your datum features. And so the laser tracker, if you're not familiar with it, is a pretty, is an instrument that looks at the reflection from a corner cube and it measures angles and distance to be able to measure the position of that corner cube. And there are lots and lots of them. And they're really common for all kinds of industries. Some other things that you can do, um, you can mount the SMRs onto your part. This is what I had on that previous part where they were actually touching the datum feature, which was the outer cylinder. And so if we have the SMRs touch the outer cylinder and we put them in the right place, then we know the outer cylinder is in the right place. If that's our datum, then we're done. We can also have an SMR at the center of a part that has light coming to focus, the line focus references from different places. And so this isn't a confocal reflection or anything. This corner cube looks basically the same to all of these different beams of light that are coming in. And so we can use this to define X, Y, and Z of this single SMR using multiple patterns. And then the other thing is we can use kinematics. Okay, if we have a kinematic interface, we just respect that interface with our SMRs, make a transfer using the, the line focus reference, fluff out our tilt fringes, um, and then we can def define the position of the kinematic interfaces to this few micron accuracy. So there are a number of options for doing this for your test. Um, one is you can, these are building blocks. I've shown them to you. I'd be happy to tell you more. Um, you can use those building blocks and define a, an alignment plan that, that uses them. And we'll provide the holograms that, um, that, that, that allow you to do that. You could go one step further with us and we can develop the alignment plan. If you tell us your datum features and your requirements, we can come up with something that we think works. Um, we can also build hardware and do some in-house testing if that's, um, if that's what you want. And in special cases, we'll build a whole complete measurement system for you.